The Ghostly Lamp It was the end of another busy day on the narrow gauge rail. The engines were all talking about the day's events that evening at the sheds. All except for Peter Sam. He was getting ready to take some supplies to the quarry. The winch, which brought slate trucks up and down the hillside, was in need of repair, and the quarry manager wanted it mended by morning. Don't forget your lamp, Peter Sam, advised Rusty. The line will be dark tonight. Of course, Rusty. I never leave without a lamp when I take night trains. It always keeps me safe. Still, you'd best be careful, Scarloy replied, unless you want to end up like Proteus. The other engines stared. Who is Proteus? Proteus, began Scarloy had the brightest lamp around. It's said that when he puffed along at night, you saw his lamp before you saw him. The silent engines listened with interest. But one night, Scarloe continued, he left to collect a late night delivery. But the yard manager said he never arrived. Next morning, they searched up and down the line and didn't find a single trace of an engine. What happened to him? gasped Duncan. No one knows, but many railway men say that some nights his lamp shines through the darkness, and if you follow it too far into the fog, you just might not come back. The engines were rather quiet. What a load of rubbish, huffed Sir Handel. All the same, be on your guard tonight, Peter Sam, Scarlowe said ominously. Pooh, scoffed Peter Sam. But secretly, he was rather nervous. At last, the supplies had been loaded into trucks, and Peter Sam trundled up the line. The fog grew thicker as the night grew darker. Peter Sam's lamp illuminated the line. Halfway there, halfway there, sang Peter Sam happily. He felt quite safe with his lamp. All was going well, until suddenly, everything became dark, and Peter Sam quickly stopped. What's happened? I can't see a thing, he complained. The driver stepped out and found a broken lamp beside the line. That's torn it, he said. Your lamp wasn't secured properly and it fell off. We'll just have to be extra careful. Peter Sam didn't sing now. He was very quiet as he huffed slowly and carefully along. His surroundings looked far more eerie now. The old trees looked like twisted hands sprouting from the ground. As he rounded a bend, he saw a bright light shining in the distance. Peter Sam stopped suddenly. It couldn't be Proteus, could it? Then, he felt a rush of wind whisper around his funnel, as if it were alive. Peter Sam was sure it was Proteus. Maybe whoever is shining that lamp can help us, said the driver. But Peter Sam was too frightened to move. Come on, Peter Sam, encouraged the driver. The winch can't mend itself. But that's Proteus's lamp, surely. If we follow it too far into the fog, would be lost forever. Don't be daft, it's only a story, chuckled the driver. 
Peter Sam inched forward, approaching the light little by little. The wind grew stronger and stronger, and there seemed to be a whirring sound. What awaited Peter Sam wasn't a ghost engine, but Harold the helicopter. Hello there, old chap, roared Harold. I'm dropping off medical supplies to the local villagers. Where are you up to tonight? Oh, Harold, thank goodness you're here, sighed Peter Sam. I've lost my lamp, and I need something to light the way to the quarry. I'll guide you there with my spotlight, Harold offered. And so it was arranged. Harold flew overhead, shining his spotlight down on the track in front of Peter Sam, guiding the way. In no time at all, Peter Sam had delivered the supplies for the winch to the quarry. The workmen finished their work at the incline, and Peter Sam headed for home. When Peter Sam rolled into the shed later that night, Scarloe opened the sleepy eye. Oh, oh, hello, Peter Sam. Did you see Proteus's lamp? No, smiled Peter Sam, but I saw Harold's plenty. And he went happily to sleep, no longer afraid of silly old lamps shining in the dark.